attending to any of the items on the other paper this particular Thursday. Distinguished Senator, you call for the House to uh, stand down the, all the, all the items on the other paper and adjourn to Thursday the 12th. The reason being that we received a letter from the minority, and that is PDP, that they are nationwide holding their award and local government congresses. And uh, most of the members, as you could see, I think we had only two or three members of the PDP that are in attendance today. All of them have traveled uh, to carry out this, their party national uh, assignment. In view of that, we said we should uh, honor them by adjourning the, the Senate to, to Thursday, because the primaries, we understand, or the local government congresses will continue to Tuesday and Wednesday next week. That is the reason for the adjournment. And it has been the tradition of the National Assembly or the Senate particularly to always acknowledge the opposition party or minority party in case they have an event of, uh, an, like this. Thank you very much. That explains the reason behind the standing down of all the items on the other paper this Thursday as well as adjourning to Thursday next week for the Senate to convene. Thank you and over to you in the studio. Thank you, Mohammed. A weak institutional and legal framework as well as overbearing interface of state governors have been identified as responsible for the reoccurring crisis rocking some houses of assembly in the nation. These were the views of political and academic analysts who featured on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria to discuss the causes of these challenges and ways to mitigate them. Joy Uzo reports. Guests on the program were unanimous in acknowledging that the continuous crisis in state houses of assembly in the country is disturbing. While accepting that conflicts in legislative chambers are inevitable, they attribute some of the causes of the fracas to weak institutions and poor legal framework that must be breached. The guests suggested proper monitoring and evaluation of activities of the lawmakers to ensure that they conform to laws of the land and democratic norms, principles and international best practices. They noted that for the benefit of future generations, steps must be taken to ensure that sanity is restored to the state houses of assembly. Um, I'll categorize this problem in three angles. First, the selfishness and greed and lack of patriotism of the members. Secondly, the overbearing and undue influence of the governor. And third, the political interest of the Abuja factor, as um, history has proven. Lack of autonomy uh, in terms of funding. And the second one is attitudinal. And that is where, what is actually much more difficult to deal with and uproot from our political system. We need to strengthen the norms and bones of the law guiding our legislative assemblies. If somebody engages in unruly behavior, uh, that should not be condoned. It should not just be suspension for three weeks or six months. It should be that you are, you are, you are going to lose your seat. That means you are not worthy of being a representative of the people. The guests also described as worrisome the poor response of security officials during such crisis. Two, three people gather, they impeach or purport to impeach people knowing that it is illegal. And you still see the police and the governors take sides with them. So it is a critical thing that requires that we look at the underlying uh, factors. They urged political parties to raise the bar by ensuring that those who emerge on their platforms are credible and of good conduct. In Abuja, Joy Uzo, NTA News. The acting chairman, House Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions, Abubakar Fulata, has reiterated the committee's commitment to ensure justice for aggrieved Nigerians who bring their petitions to the National Assembly. He said of these at an investigative hearing on a number of petitions for consideration, National Assembly correspondent Ifani Ezumba reports. We're sorry for the poor audio of that report. I'm sure if we fix it, it will still come in the course of the bulletin, but let's move ahead. The federal government, along with various anti-corruption agencies and civil society organizations, 
have put together an anti-corruption framework which is to be presented at a World Anti-Corruption Summit built for London next week. The platform was at the Nigerian Anti-Corruption Summit which was held in Abuja. Femi Okewo was there and now reports. On the 12th of May, a World Anti-Corruption Summit would begin in London. The Abuja Anti-Corruption Summit is therefore to set a national agenda for that summit and indeed the president himself will lead the delegation to that summit. Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation in a message to the summit stressed that Nigeria's priority is building strong institutions that will help sustain the fight against corruption, lamenting that corruption has continued to be a main driver of poverty in Nigeria. Analysis of, corrup of corruption in Nigeria suggests that patronage culture has evolved around a powerful elite that is in control of oil revenues and would do anything to maintain the status quo. Various other organizations spoke about the advantages the London summit will provide for Nigeria's fight against corruption. Those of you who are going will be able to get enough ideas, information, and position which will have an outcome that will have the greatest benefit for this country. Fighting corruption requires the efforts of various governance institutions, including through the enforcement of existing anti-corruption laws, rules, and regulation. We concentrate all our attention about fighting corruption at the federal government level. We forget about the state. Without the state, where is Nigeria? Resolutions from the Abuja Anti-Corruption Summit will be used to galvanize international support to recover Nigeria's stolen phone. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NT News. Wife of the President Aisha Buhari says there is no gain saying that girls and women are an integral part of the nation building with a crucial role to play in national development. She made this known at a forum on girls and women empowerment in Abuja at the Bola Brooklyn Sunday reports. administration will continue to support programs that will increase access to basic education, especially for the girl child and women. These will improve their own lives and the lives of their families and the overall condition of life in their communities. Adult education for parents, especially mothers, means creating conditions that ensure that their children, especially their daughters, have equal access to basic education. They are able to make informed decisions about their future, and they're able to protect themselves from social vices. The program is tagged Empowerment for Girls and Women in Literacy and Skills Development through the use of ICT. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. If you're just joining us, you're watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Time now to join Lagos for their contributions. Hello, Abdullahi. It's good to see you. Hello, Lajide. Good to see you too, and thanks for joining us here in Lagos. Media practitioners, scholars in mass communications and journalism have converged on the United Nations Information Center in Lagos to brainstorm on access to information, challenges, and the safety of journalists in the country. Musa Toliat reports that the media workshop was in commemoration of this year's World F Press Freedom Day. My camera is like that. Where is your camera now? Such attacks on journalists that sometimes result in permanent disability or death and various forms of hostilities against media practitioners necessitated the World Press Freedom Day workshop by the United Nations Information Center in Lagos. If every journalist you know, has access to information, then accountability will improve, transparency will improve, good governance will improve. Issues on freedom of expression and safety of journalists as well as challenges and prospects of the Freedom of Information Act were also discussed. It's the responsibility of journalists to know the, what the law entails and use it to their own advantage. And in that essence, they get the real freedom they have always clamored for. As we begin to, um, as stakeholders, come together to look at how do we ensure journalists are protected and not be scared of you know, uh, the outcome. I, I think we'll get some results. The resource persons identified poor remuneration, media ownership interference, and censorship 
as part of the challenges faced by journalists. Employers in the media industry, for me, I see it as a conspiracy to uh, continuously place their workers in danger. Because if you pay somebody well, the person will not be talking from the two sides of his mouth. So the conscience is already sold. And so that opens the person up to danger. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. The Lagos State Government has announced plans to promote strategic initiative for the development of coconut production and processing in the state. This initiative is expected to create employment opportunities and show wealth creation in line with the food security program of the state. The State Commissioner for Agriculture, Suara Oluatoni, disclosed these at the press briefing in Lagos. No Sausula has more. The Commissioner, Suara Oluatoni, stated that the state's strategic food security plan is being implemented vigorously with the collaboration between Lagos and Kebi states for the development of agricultural commodities like rice, wheat, and granuts, amongst others. Coconut development in Lagos state for tourism and poverty alleviation. Commercial agriculture development project to increase productivity. National Fadama development project for poverty alleviation. The permanent secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture, Dr. Olai Wale Onosoya, explained that the Ambode led administration intends to upgrade the Imota rice mill to achieve 10,000 metric tons per hour production of rice and also invites private investors to complement that with an additional 10,000 metric tons per hour. When we started our rice program uh, in the last uh, seven to eight years, the level of rice production at that time was about 0.8 metric tons per hectare. Today, we are on three metric tons per hectare. And today, rice production in the state has increased. The commissioner disclosed that the present administration is doing everything within its power to ensure the continued availability of quality food to residents in the right quantity and at the right price. In Lagos, Nosa Usula, NTA News. Lagos State University Teaching Hospital has carried out the first successful bone bridge surgery in West Africa and cochlear implant surgeries on three deaf patients. Commissioner for Health Dr. Jide Idris made this known at the ministerial brief briefing. In Lagos, in commemoration with Governor Ambade's one year anniversary. Nosa Osula again reports. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Jide Idris, disclosed that the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital had its first successful kidney transplant carried out by its team of urologists and nephrologists in November 2015. The renovation of infrastructure at this level of care is essentially to provide quality services to the congested tertiary health facility from attending to patients that could be appropriately managed at lower levels of care. While reeling out the various completed and ongoing projects in medical centers across the state, Mr. Idris said a new critical care unit at Lassus and Lagos State University College of Medicine has been practically completed and ready for commissioning. The Chief Executive Officer of the Lagos State AIDS Control Agency, Dr. Olusei Temowo, stated that 645,301 residents were cancelled and tested across the state, while 47,393 residents are actively receiving free antiretroviral drugs. So that has been a lot of improvement, and we are still working on that because our target is what to call zero prevalence, talking about river areas and all those uh, peripheral areas of Lagos State. Under the school health intervention program, the commissioner stated that 16,124 pupils in 33 public primary schools in 22 local government areas and local council development areas in the state were screened for medical, dental, ear, nose and throat morbidities, while 11,327 were treated in Lagos, Nosa, Osula, NCA News. And those are the top stories. These are from Lagos. It's back to Jude, who has small stories in Abuja. Jude. Thank you very much, Abdullahi. The House of Representatives has concluded its first session of the ongoing sectoral debate. And Ignatius Nkor is here to give us an update on today's presentation by the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okechuku Enelama. Well, uh, today marks the end of the first section of the sectoral debate by members of the House of Representatives 
Uh, Three ministers that so far have submitted their roadmaps towards diversification of Nigeria's economy. Uh, like I said earlier, the first is by Minister of uh, uh, Information, Culture and Tourism, and then the second one by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. And today, it was, it was the turn of the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, Oketuku Eleneme, who, well, while in his presentation, uh, enunciated what he called the four pillars of diversification in the sector. One, he says, uh, creating a enabling environment for investors. And uh, the second one is implementing the Nigeria's uh, Industrial Revolution Plan. Uh, the next one is that the government should champion the cause of uh, small and medium scale enterprises. And then the final one is that the National Assembly uh, needs to intervene in that sector by repealing some laws that are obsolete. Well, uh, Representative uh, Rimande Shaul is from Tarabo State. He, he wants to tell us his assessment of the minister's presentation so far. How will you assess them? Well, so far, so good. Uh, when the government took over, they, uh, they didn't have much, uh, uh, they, they were not clear as to what they wanted to do because they had not been in government. They've been in government for one year now, and so they should be in a position to tell us what they want to do. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture made some very key and valid points. The same were made today by the good points were made today by the Minister of, uh, uh, the, the Minister that came in today. Now, what is important now is for us to sit down. When we sit down, when we come back for the debate, we are going to discuss uh, on what needs to be done in each sector of the economy. What needs to be done? You see, as a legislature, our role is to create the regulatory framework for things to be done properly. Thank you for, for your time. Representative uh, Zephaniah Gisalo is from the Federal Capital Territory. Uh, these ministers are representative of the president at their own level in their ministry. All the MDS are the representative. So I want to urge the Mr. President to help the ministry so that they can cope with the situation. Thank you, sir. Well, the House also received the report, report of ad hoc committee that's, uh, that's, that's set to investigate the letter of the Attorney General of the Federation and they say that they have to go and re reseal the Kogizet House of Assembly. It's back to the studio. Thank you very much. Yes. The National Logistics Committee for the Distribution of Perishable Items seized by the Nigeria Customs Service meant for internally displaced persons camps nationwide as directed by President Mohamed Buhari has concluded the first phase of its assignment. This follows the flag off of the exercise in May degree by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuburate. Tukunonso more reports. From the various warehouses where the larger part of the relief materials, which include rice, vegetable oil, detergents, sugar, clothing, among other items, were stored for distribution to IDP camps within the state to this Bakasi camp, the National Committee was satisfied with the job done by the local organizing committee. All members of the committee are very grateful to the president for giving us the opportunity to undertake this big responsibility. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukro Burate called on public spirited individuals to complement the federal government's initiative. The contending aspects of governance for available resources suggest we must look elsewhere to generate the wherewithal to give our affected compatriots a sense of belonging. Brunei State Governor Kashim Shetima and the IDPs expressed gratitude to the federal government at degrading the insurgents. Since May 2015, a good chunk of the burden has been taken off our shoulders by the federal government that we shall make judicious use of the donation. This gesture by the federal government underscores its continued commitment towards alleviating the plight of the entirely displaced persons, even as the Boko Haram insurgency is finally defeated. From the Bakasi IDP camp, Medugri, Chukunon Sumo, NTA News. The Defence Headquarters has flagged up Operation Brain Gain, an initiative aimed at sensitizing students of secondary school age and opportunities and career prospects in the Nigerian military. Briefing Defence Correspondent in Abuja, Chief of Military and Civil Relations, Defence Headquarters, Major General Richard Duru said the project cut across two geopolitical zones in the north and south. Keji Busari Ahmad reports. Hunting for excellent brains for career prospects in different fields of endeavor, especially among youths in both secondary and tertiary institutions, is said to be a sure way of equipping the workforce with the best of brains. 
To confront the high rate of security challenges in the country, the Nigerian military is poised to enlist high-quality manpower. Hence, the need to key into the brain gain project. The target audience is specifically the SS3 students. However, the exercise is also open to other students who are still uh, yet to attain SS3 status. The program, which kicked off in April, will commence its last phase on the 8th of this month. KG Busari Ahmed, NTA News. We have a report on rice famine in Kebi State, plus Zamfara Police Command arrests criminals terrorizing communities in the state. Zainab in Sokoto will be our guide. Today and welcome. National Youth Service Corps has been described as the best system of achieving national integration in Nigeria. This came to the fore when the new Director General of NYSC, Brigadier General Suleiman Zakari Kazawe, paid courtesy visit to Sokoto State Governor Amin Waziri Tambwal and Sultan Muhammad Saad Abubakar III while on an inspection tour of NYSC facilities in the state. Abdrahman Osman Jibril completes the story. Governor Amin Waziri Tambwal had, while welcoming the Director General of the NYSC, assured him of continuous harmonious working relationship between the state government and the scheme. He requested for posting of more medical doctors and those who read English and mathematics which will help in improving the education challenges facing the state. Governor Tambol told the vista of the state government's plan to renovate Copper's Lodge across the state, sustain payment of monthly allowances, and ensure the security of the core members. The Director General of the NYSC, Brigadier General Suleiman Zakari Kazauri, commended Sokoto State Government for its support to the scheme, with special emphasis on the permanent orientation camp built. He solicited continuous support to the scheme, especially on the security of the core members. The NYSC Director General was also at the Sultan's Palace, where the Sultan Muhammad Saad Abakad III said, leadership of any type is characterized by many challenges and stressed the need for the new Director General to brace up for his new responsibilities. The Sultan reminded the Director General that he took over the mantle of leadership at a critical time urging him to build up from where his predecessor stopped. He called on Nigerians to learn to live together, irrespective of ethnic or religious background. In Sokoto, Abramon Osmanji Brila, NTA News. The state government has pledged to create an enabling atmosphere between hosts and communities and investors willing to explore investment opportunities in the state. Usman Abdullah Sheh, who reports that Governor Abubakar Achiku Bagudu said this while on assessment tour of five local government areas in the state to see how far farmers have gone with rice production. Among the areas visited by Governor Atiku Bagudu and members of his cabinet include Zaga, Zaria Kalakala, Shanga, Wara, Duz Imwadi, Yauri, and many others. During the assessment tour, Governor Bagudu commended the commitment of farmers and expressed his confidence that the state can fit the entire country. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, who urged investors to come to Kebi State, for the state has potential to accommodate all kinds of agricultural investors, promised to create an enabling environment for development of both host communities and investors in the state. We are calling on investors to come to Kebi and we will treat them with respect, we will treat them with high regard for coming to our state. Some people which include traditional leaders, farmers and the women group commended the present administration for its efforts to improve their socio-economic condition through provision of meaningful projects and programs that directly touch the life of rural communities. Brian Kebi, Usman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. Zamfara State Police Command has arrested some suspected notorious criminals who have been terrorizing people of Zamfara and some neighboring states in recent times. The suspects were paraded to newsmen at the command's headquarters in Gusau. Jamilu Ibrahim has more. Five of those paraded were suspected notorious cattle wrestlers who had been allegedly terrorizing people of Zamfara and some neighboring states in recent times. One of the members of the syndicate is a 25-year-old man from Kasina State who claimed to be a polytechnic student. Zamfara State Police Public Relations Officer DSP Senusa Amiru who paraded the suspects on behalf of the State Commissioner of Police Mr. Estefanus Shatima said they were arrested following some operations. 
He said the leg ran out of the suspected cattle wrestlers shortly after they sold out five of the stolen cows, adding that receivers of the animals have been also apprehended. Other suspect paraded is a middle-aged man from Kano State that allegedly boggled and robbed at a filling station in Zulmi local government area of Zamfara State, along with some three others who are still at large. DSP Amiru explained that police and other security agencies were making concerted efforts to rid the state of crimes and criminals. Most of the suspects who spoke with NTA News confessed to the crimes. Meanwhile, Zamfara State Police Command has arrested a number of persons for allegedly selling petrol in plastic containers across the state. The suspects have since been prosecuted. From Kusau, Jamil Ibrahim, NTA News. And that's it from where it's back to you today. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Zainab, and moving on. The Nigerian Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress have been asked to adopt an approach of one youth, one mentor as a way of bridging the skills gap Nigerian youths lack to be gainfully employed or become entrepreneurs. The Special Assistant to the President on Youth and Students Affairs, Nasser Said Adama, handed out this task during the first Youth Employability Skills Interactive Session held in Abuja. The Special Assistant noted that the National Bureau of Statistics Unemployment and Underemployment Report fourth quarter of 2015 shows that 14.8 million of Nigeria's total labor force are either unemployed or underemployed. Therefore, this present administration's policy on youth is not only to provide employment but create opportunities for self-employment in the agricultural and solid mineral sectors through coordinated approach by various government agencies. All the, uh, we have all those in offices, in our offices. Our strategy, therefore, is to partner with those that are already engaged in the labor force to provide mentorship, training, and guidance to our youth to build those skills needed to absorb them into the labor force. Representative of the Minister of Labor and Employment and others spoke on the need to address casualization, reduce unemployment by mobilizing foreign direct investment as well as ethical standards for youth employment in different sectors. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We will now take a break to return shortly. Do stay with us. If you hear a bomb explosion or gunshots of an active shooter, that might be a terror attack. At such times, Always remember three action words. Run, hide, report. Don't try to run towards the terror scene to save the situation because there might be a second bomb blast or another attack. Run far away and take cover. Make sure you are safe first. Yes, it is in our nature to sympathize over the hurt. But remember, only trained personnel can help in such situations. When in a secured environment, promptly call relevant authorities and help will come. For anonymous reporting, call 09630-3250 to 5 or 0813-2222-106. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and... <laughs> We must remain steadfast in our commitment to steer this country back to greatness. He is one of the best brands that we have as a country, and we have to take advantage uh, of that. Look inwards and see how we'll be able to announce our resources. The problem of Nigeria is man-made. It's just a question of patience and cooperate with the government. Nigeria will go back to those better this the man who's leading us, he wouldn't talk much, but he does a lot. We shall deliver security, jobs, and infrastructure. This is the right of all Nigerians. Our actions will speak for us. The clock ticks, the anxiety thickens. 
get ready as the Garden City of Pawtucket plays host to the biggest and most prestigious Africa Movie Academy Awards. Come June 11, 2016, Africa's most distinguished and creative filmmakers and practitioners will unite for the 12th edition of the Amers. A night to reward and celebrate excellence and glamour. Amar. Peace through African cinema. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, this is Nationwide on a network service of the NTA. The staff of the Federal Teaching Hospital, Ido Ekiti, have been advised to respect their Hippocratic Oath of protecting public lives and commence the delivery of qualitative medical services promptly. Community leaders who give the advice also urge residents to desist from acts capable of truncating the peaceful atmosphere of the town. Michael Olale reports. The deaths of some doctors at the Federal Teaching Hospital, Idoikiti, stirred up anger among the unions who accused the chief medical director of complicity and complacency, thus forcing its workers to down tools, a development which invariably has caused untimely hardship on the patient, including the untimely death of some. This, however, informed the intervention of the host community led by the monarch who are calling for the prompt resumption of medical services. The hospital is not the personal investment of anybody or any group of people. So the idea that you will come here to become millionaires, they should shed that. People should work for their salaries, take it, and leave. The hospital should give the, the health delivery to the community. We don't know, we don't care about whoever that becomes the CMD. The labor unions at the institution said it is also working on modalities at resolving the umpires. We cannot do otherwise. The vote we have sworn to is to serve humanity and to take care of humanity. It is becoming obvious that uh, the, the people that are protesting are actually not protesting as a result of the loss of lives that we have recorded. They've been disgruntled and they've been identified as the group of people that are not happy with the reforms that uh, I have been able to carry out uh, in the last three and a half years. Medical activities are expected to resume fully soon in Adwikiti. Michael Lale, NT News. Over now to our Ibadan Network Center where Kemi is standing by with stories making the rounds from that zone. Kemi, it's over to you. Thank you, Olajide, and welcome to Ibadan. Former President Chief Olusha Gombasanjo is championing an initiative tagged Zero Hunger in Nigeria to enhance food security and promote sustainable agriculture. Correspondent Olumide Gonsala has details. Chairman at the Nigeria Zero Hunger Strategic Review inaugural meeting and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chief Olusha Gombasanjo, urged the federal government to ban importation of food items that Nigeria can easily produce in order to achieve the Zero Hunger Initiative. I feel incensed, and I have an apology for this, that the vegetables, carrot, and timber that are being eaten in uh, hotels in Lagos are being imported from South Africa. It is disgraceful. It's painful. It's unacceptable. I think that should be stopped now. And other speakers at the event advocated population management, youth participation in agriculture, proper legislation, provision of infrastructure, women empowerment, adequate security, among others, as means of ending chronic hunger 
malnutrition, and food insecurity in Nigeria. This document will help to facilitate the implementation of the national policy on food and nutrition that was approved by the Federal Executive Council a week ago. The whole platform we are talking on today is about Nigeria. We should be able to reduce importation and then increase exportation. And then there will be food safety, food security. The final stage of the strategic review report is scheduled for 15th November, while the launch of the Zero Hunger Initiative is slated for 1st of December at an high level event in Ibadan. Ulum de Guntola, NTA News. A public seminar has advocated exploration of the nation's diverse cultural and solid minerals potentials as viable solutions to the current economic challenges facing the nation. This was a summary of the stakeholders' seminar with the theme, Legal Mining and Extraction, Solutions to Economic Challenges, held in Ife, Oshu State. Olaide Abbas has details. The seminar was organized by the Natural History Museum of Antiquity and Contemporary African Arts of the Obafe Miawolowo University. The seminar highlighted the numerous benefits the nation tends to derive from culture, solid minerals, and natural resources, if properly harnessed. Going back to create wealth and create job opportunity for our people by harnessing what we have naturally our land resources, our forest resources, our river resources, our monuments, our people. The owner of Ife who spoke in the same vein called for an effective legal framework to unearth some of our natural resources. Government had to force the hands of a cartel of importance for us to have achieved that. What naturally should be morally good for the entire society. Speakers at the seminar, however, called for equal benefits for the locals where the natural resources are being explored. In Ileife, Olaide Abbas, NTA News. Establishing civil military relations has been identified as one of the major ways to get rid of corruption in the society. General Officer Commanding 2 Division Nigerian Army, Major General Lazarus Ilu, said this at an official visit to independent corrupt practices. Offenses Commission, ICPC or Yogun Office. Correspondent TMC Ajagon was there. The familiarization visit by the GOC 2 Division Nigerian Army, Major General Lars Ilo, was in furtherance of the interagency collaboration and building synergy between the two agencies. Major General Hilo has shown the commission of support from the Nigerian Army at every point in time, especially in eliminating corruption in the society. Work with Nigerians with them, work in close collaboration with the ICPC office in our and Ogun State. In any way they need our support and services to combat the menace of corruption, we always afford it. The State Commissioner High CPC or your Ogo State Office, Mr. Stephen Pimo, assured the public that the Commission is ready to fulfill its obligation in curbing corruption in the state. He enumerated the benefits of the GOC's visit to the office. There are some operations we may carry out and we will need um, reinforced security. And the Army is one of those institutions that we can fall back on when we need reinforcement in the discharge of our duties. The two organizations have, however, pledged loyalty in making Nigeria a better society in Ibadan. Here, Mr. Ajago, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. It's back to your larger day. Thank you, Kemi, from my Ibadan Network Center. And now to politics. The People's Democratic Party PDP National Working Committee has cancelled the Congress and committees in Adama, Lagos, and Ocean states. New committees have been reconstituted accordingly. A statement signed by the National Organizing Secretary of the PDP, Elijah Abakar Mustafa, indicates that the Congress will now hold in Adama, Lagos, and Ocean states on Friday, 6th of this month. The People's Democratic Party has fixed its national convention for 21st of this month in Port Harcourt, River State. 
The need for understanding, cooperation and teamwork among members of the People's Democratic Party with a view to providing vibrant opposition for good governance in Borno State dominated discussions at a stakeholders meeting of the party held in Meduguri. Lami Ali has the details. The stakeholders meeting was convened to re-strategize and discuss important issues such as the National Convention of the PDP slated for this year. Ketika Committee Chairman of the party, al Hajar Rwanjuli, emphasized the need for party members to consult widely to enable them to work collectively for the growth of the PDP. He called on the people of Brno to give unalloyed support to Senator Ali Madhushari being the national chairman and also a prominent son of the state to enable him to turn around the fortunes of the PDP and restore its glory. Shatima Burma, on behalf of other stakeholders, re-echoed their commitment to support Ali Madhu Sharif to move the party to enviable heights. Collectively, we work together and achieve the ultimate goal and objective of our great party. Former member House of Representatives Baba Isa Lawan Kangar said party members at all levels across the country must imbibe the spirit of sportsmanship, urging that election into party or political positions should be based on merit. Former acting chairman of the party in the state, Imbri Sagabata, in a remark, called on the members to be loyal and put the interests of the party above personal gains. It may degree. Lami Ali, NT News. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party in the Southwest has agreed to rise up beyond personal interests to confront national issues that affect the Yoruba race, especially the menace of headsmen. It is in the communique at the end of a leaders' meeting in Akure. Doris Olumoko reports. Delegates at the meeting include the leadership of the PDP from Lagos, Oshun, Oyo, Ogun, Ekiti, and Ondo states. Also in attendance, we are two PDP governors in the zone. In a communique read by Professor Tawhid Adedoja, the PDP leaders agreed that the party will not shy away from effectively playing the role of an opposition. That the meeting notes with the state that a poor state of the national economy and feel terribly sad that the current ruling party has not demonstrated the capacity to contain the economic challenges with attendant building fortunes that has reserved almost all the economic gains recorded under the PDP. Undo State Governor Dr. Olusha Gumimiko and his Secretary State counterpart Ayodele Fayoshi emphasized the need for peace and unity among members of the PDP. The future becomes, but by our actions and the actions of today, we can either fulfill that destiny or we just destroy and betray it. And for me, there's no alternative to unity in the Southwest at this point in time. Our own motto. Myself and the Domino Party leaders said that we want a united PDP. The meeting also set up a committee that will equitably distribute the positions zoned to the Southwest ahead of its national convention. The positions are National Secretary, National Publicity Secretary, National Auditor, and Zonal Executive Committee. In Akure, Doris Ulumoko, NTA News. Governor Ogwani meets with traditional rulers and security. These and more from our Enogo Network Center with Chinyere. Thank you, Olajide, and welcome to Enugu. The Anambra State Governor, Mr. Willie Obiano, has visited the victims of fuel explosion at Kara Market near Bridgehead, Onicha. John Ogwejofo reports that the governor also visited some of the victims at Toronto Hospital Onisha and said government will settle the hospital bills of the affected victims. Governor Biano, who was conducted round the world by the chief medical officer of the hospital, expressed his sympathy with the victims and urged the hospital management to give them accelerated treatment. He pleaded with residents of the state not to store a hog fuel in a congested environment to prevent avoidable accidents. Uh, 13 people were injured and the uh, Anambra State government has uh, undertaken to pay the bills of all the 13 people that are involved. But once more, we see this opportunity to request and please ask the good people of Anambra 
not to buy fuel in jerry cans and store in their homes because uh, it would be uh, it can cause this kind of challenge that we just start here the chief medical officer of Toronto Hospital, Dr. Mad Wankwa, said the victim sustained superficial burns and an unstable condition. The explosion which injured 13 persons happened in the heart of Shanti is being occupied by officers as their residents. The police public relations officer in a phone conversation said the explosion was caused by fuel stored in a bottled water container by a hawker in one of the shanties. When NTA visited the scene of the incident, the police had cordoned off the area while the residents went about their normal businesses. In Onitsha, John Ogwejo for NTA News. Enugu State Government is to inaugurate the Neighborhood Association Board and evoke relevant laws of the state to make it functional in the interest of peace and security of the people. Governor Ogwani stated this during a meeting with traditional rulers and President General of Tan Unions in Enugu State. Ijoma Ugweke reports. Governor Ugwani said the meeting became necessary after the ugly incident that occurred at Nimbo Uzuwani. It is to have discussion on the method for safeguarding the communities in the state. The governor noted that most of the neighborhood wage have not been functioning effectively due to lack of funds and incentives. Notwithstanding the current poor finances of government, we are constrained by presenting circumstances to provide an initial seed money of a hundred million to support the security efforts and activities of the communities. Charged traditional rulers and the president's general to work harmoniously towards reviving neighborhood work in their communities to assist security agencies provide effective security to the people of the state. In a communique issued at the end of the meeting, the traditional rulers commended the governor for the way he handled the incident at Nimbu and thanked him for provision of funds in support of the security efforts and activities of the communities. The meeting was attended by traditional rulers from the three senatorial zones of the state and some stakeholders in Enugu State. In Enugu, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. The Regional Coordinator Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, Southeast Operations, Charles Nwambara, has advised traders and manufacturers to ensure that the products they market are of good quality and standard, as the country will not serve as a dumping ground for substandard products. He gave advice during a raid at Co Camp, a market where tires are sold. Chika Ugu reports. Business at Mission Avenue Co Camp stood still when members of the Standard Organization of Nigeria, accompanied by some security agents, raided the area of substandard and expired tires. Most of the shops were locked and vehicle tires seized. The regional coordinator of Southeast Operations said it is a nationwide product raid aimed at relieving the markets of substandard products. So we want to uh, tell Nigerians that SON can no longer tolerate unbridled trade, manufacture, or importation of sustainable products. The state coordinator, Enugu State, said the organization invited the traders for a sensitization program before the raid, but they did not comply. NIS is a certification mark that good product in Nigeria has. So people should look at that NIS mark. And then for the traders, of course, the office is open to any trader who cares to improve his business. The Standards Organization of Nigeria promotes consumer confidence and global competitiveness of Nigerian products and services through standardization and quality assurance. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NCA News. And that does it from here. It's back to you, Olajide. Many thanks, Chinyere, in our Enugu Network Centre. The strength of a nation, analysts say, can be measured by the number of women behind its men. 7,500 women and girls have been added to the strength of Nigeria as a graduate under UNESCO Always Project in Literacy and the Use of ICT. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday has details. Uh, in a country where more uh, or about 50% of the population is not educated, 
it, it, it means that they, they are almost exclude, excluded. Statistics from the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, reveals that there are approximately 10.5 million out-of-school children in the world, with girls dominating the figure. And Nigeria accounts for about 47% of the population. To address this challenge, UNESCO and a development partner established the program, UNESCO Always Projects. Anta An is one of the 7,500 beneficiaries. See, this time around, I can be able to read and write. I'm fulfilled. When you look at her, she knows what she's into. She'll be able to help in the economic of even her home, her own family. Really, to get girls out of illiteracy, the girls who dropped schools, at risk at dropping school, who had never had the chance to go to school, we need them to be educated. Participants at the forum call on other private organizations to embrace the gesture in complementing government's efforts. With the empowerment of these over 7,000 women and girls, the question is not who will let me, but who will stop me. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Thank you very much, Adebola there. And now to global tidbits. Zimbabwe to print US dollar equivalent and Brazil cut suspends parliament speaker. These and more on global tidbits with Talatu Ezureke. The government of Zimbabwe, in a bid to ease cash shortage, has taken steps to print its own version of the US dollar. The country's central bank governor said the cash, known as bond notes, will be backed by $200 million support from the African Export Import Bank. From Kenya, a woman rescued from a collapsed residential building five days after the incident occurred. There are hopes of finding more than 80 other persons still missing. Similarly, protesters have burned down at least 14 schools in South Africa's northern Lipopo province over district boundaries disputes. Elsewhere, Brazil top court suspends lower house speaker from office following a request by the country's attorney general. The speaker, a high critic of the president, is being accused of trying to obstruct corruption investigation against him and intimidate congressmen. And Turkey's Prime Minister promises to stand down at an extraordinary Congress of his ruling AK party later this month. That is all on Global Tidbits. Talati Ezeriki, NTA News. And on spot, Super Eagles remain unmoved in latest FIFA rankings as Real Madrid set up a UEFA Champions League final against Atletico Madrid. Kene Emma Abudike brings us more on sport update. The 2016 International Tennis Federation Pro Circuit enters the semi-final stage Friday at the tennis section of the Abuja National Stadium with top seed David Perez Sanz of Spain taking on Antal van der Diem of Netherlands. Perez Sanz defeated Nicolas Schultz of South Africa 7-6, 4-6, 7-6, while Karim Mohamed Mamoun lost in straight set 6-3, 7-6 to Dutch smasher van der Diem. Nigerian Super Eagles remain 67th in the world and 14th in Africa in the FIFA rankings released for the month of May, Thursday. Nigeria maintains 534 points behind Africa's highest-ranked team, Algeria, on 33rd position, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. Meanwhile, Argentina remained the world's highest-ranked team with world champions Germany in 5th position, while the three Lions of England completes the world's top 10. Real Madrid beat Manchester City 1-0 on aggregate to set up an all-Spanish final in the 2016 UEFA Champions League. A Fernando own goal off a Gareth Bale's deflected shot earned Los Blancos a final ticket against fierce city rivals Atletico, who had beaten German champions Bayern Munich 2-2 on aggregate. You need a bit of luck in, in the Champions League semi-finals, which, is, which has gone our way. But um, no, I thought we, we controlled a lot of the game. We played very good football, very professional job kept a clean sheet and uh, ultimately that's why we're in the final. The final comes up at Milan Stadio San Siro on May 28th with sports update. Kenen Imabudike, NTA News. And that's it on NTA Nationwide. Many thanks for being a part of it. Good evening.